Hey guys, it's us, Hamad, Soham, and I, Hamza, with another podcast. So today we start on a bitter note, I would say. As it's not bitter; it's a just disappointing. Disappointment. It's the third disappointment we have faced in the last four years. I'm guessing. That's right. We're talking about the new Ferrari. The I fate tribute to. Hmm. Can I just touch up on the topic? How are they naming these cars? They literally. Okay, Ferrari, the Ferrari. That's Ferrari, la Ferrari. Okay, we accepted that, and then they came out with a car named Super Fast. Like, bro, it's a Ferrari. Of course, it's fast. Like, you don't need to put that in the name. No, but what was before Super Fast? It was five five fifty Maranello. Mm. Then the five seven five Super America or something like that. Yeah. Uh, then it was the five nine nine GTB. GTO. GTO. FTO. F twelve Berlinetta. And then mm. there was that failed car also, 6.0. No, that was the... Scaligeti. Scaligeti. Yeah. That was the predecessor of the FF. Yeah. The only thing I remember about that Scaligeti car is, Vincent Chase drove it in one episode of Entourage and that's my only memory of that car. Uh, yeah. I think it had a resale value of over a million dollars. What? The Sky? Scaligeti? Scaligeti? No, that was the one that the Kuwaiti family got, right? Yeah, on Vinviki. Haan. Okay, I think so. We're getting sidetracked. We'll okay. talk about the F8 yeah. Tributo. Tributo. So first, first, the name is fucked up. What is it paying tribute to? If if Tributo means tribute, what is it paying tribute? The to? four five eight because it literally looks like the four five eight with a new body kit. So I'll tell you the thing that Ferrari's been doing. So when they came out with the three forty eight, I don't I don't remember what was before three zero eight before the three forty three five five. No, three five five is the next version of the three forty. Okay, I'll tell you what I know. Okay. So Ferrari came out with the uh, 348, mm. the 355. Both are very similar in terms of looks, also in terms of power, right. performance, everything very similar. Then they came out with the 360. 360 completely different looking car, next level of performance, benchmark in the category. Mm. Then they came out with the 430. Mm. 430 was similar to the 360, similar performance, everything is similar. Yeah. 458, completely different looking car. Insane performance benchmark in the category again. Yeah. Then they came out with the revised version, which is the 488. Mm. Major change, the turbocharger. Turbocharger. Yeah, But in, in terms of performance, it wasn't a huge gain, in, at least for me. Like yeah. That's what I think. Then they've come out with this shit, the F8 Tribe. So I understand where Soham is coming from, and I totally disagree with what Ferrari is doing. But I think we are overlooking one major factor. Ferrari has based its brand on exclusiveness. Like they give their so even though we are criticizing this car as enthusiasts, I'm sure once the booking start, people will start booking this car like anything. The thing is, Ferrari's marketing strategy is gonna fail in some years. <laughs> It's already failed. It's already <laughs> failed. I really feel like the parent company Fiat is really not paying attention. Lamborghini, like how we already know, our next topic is going to be how there are 200 Lambos in India, and Ferrari has a had a huge head start in this market, in the Indian market, and how they did not manage to capture the market share in Lambo, which has just come in in 2005, 2006. I'm guessing. Yeah, but even that they weren't officially there. It was just import, import, like and in fact in Delhi you could import Ferraris since the late 70s in India. In fact. And they still not got the market. It really shows how Ferrari is a very inefficient company. So uh, you guys know the thing. If you want to buy like an exclusive Ferrari, like a uh, La Ferrari, for example, back in like 2011 or some shit. If you wanted to buy that, you know the shit that you have to go, uh, go through to buy that car. If you are not a Ferrari owner, yeah, you have to buy. You first have to buy Cali. You have to buy California. Then you have to buy their FF. Mm. After the FF, you have to buy a high spec 458. Mm. Very high spec, like uh, probably like close to five hundred thousand dollars. Then you have to buy a few more Ferraris, like the special editions and shit. Then you get an allotment for that. Yeah. And now with the F8. Uh, What? Like, I was very disappointed with the super fast also, the eight twelve super fast. Yeah, see, what I the only Ferrari I would buy from the lineup has to be the eight twelve because first of all it is like a classic Ferrari for me, front engine V twelve yeah. GT doesn't look as good as the F twelve, but I think so it's the most decent out of the bunch. The problem I see right now is because they let go of Pininfarina. 
pin in for India. I think so. Yeah. Ferrari is on a steady downfall after they've after left they pin for India. Yeah. Or I think I so. Think pin in for India left them. No, uh, apparently they could not agree on a suitable contract. So and uh, which is very very strange because Mahindra has a contract with pin for India. How can Ferrari not afford a contract? Like I'm sure they're underpaying them, undervaluing their services. Because if Mahindra can acquire the services, I'm sure the problem is not with Pinafarina and it's a problem with the Ferrari board. Yeah, I think so. I think the priorities are not right. No, I think so. They, they, they're they saving money by not taking Pinafarina. Such a high-end design. Yeah, company. because they make insane designs and yeah, they make beautiful cars. And now, like, you can clearly see the change. It's shit. Like, the F8, first of all, in terms of, like, Ferrari's philosophy for a V8 mid-engine car, makes no sense. The F8 that should have been something next level, yeah, like, yeah. a step above the 480, which is, which clearly it isn't. Yeah, it's it's like a body it, kit, it really right? just looks like a body kit. And a yeah, so wheels. basically what I think they've done, if the, if you know the SP38 demo, right? it's a one-off, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. SP38 demo, Ferrari. In so, fact, uh, this car looks very much like a car they designed for Eric Clapton two years yeah, ago. This is the one. This is the this one. Is the one. See, this, this is the, the rear end. end. This is the rear end. Okay. You see the slats. You see those two lights. You see the exhaust. And now see this car's back. It's literally the same. Thing. Literally the same thing. So in what I think, so they what they have gifted uh, Eric Clapton two years ago. Now they're giving. It. See, that is the thing, like, they have such a loyal customer base and I feel bad for them because they're treating them very poorly. No, but the, they're high and, like, the big people who own, the, like, the collectors and stuff, they're happy, right? Yeah. Because the thing is, even if Ferrari isn't making, you know, what do you say, legendary or, like, good cars for, like, the normal buyers, normal buyers, like, the 720S market and stuff like that. Those cars have, might be shit, but the upper level, upper echelon, right? Like the SP38 and all the one of the the SP1 Monza yeah. and stuff like that. Those are actually very good cars. So for them, they don't the upper level of buyers, they don't have a problem with it. So you could say Ferrari is clearly sending out a message that even if you work hard, even if you do everything right, they can still screw you over for a car. Yeah, exactly. So. What I think is that like who Eric Clayton, right? Clapton. Eric Clapton. Clapton. So I think so Eric Clapton is the type of guy that he saw a lot of Ferraris in his childhood. Exactly. He wants a Ferrari, he wants one specially made for him, but he does not want to go to Pagani. Yeah, exactly. So he gives insane money to Ferraris, like you take this money, give me my own 480. Yeah, in fact, he owns a bunch of Ferraris and uh, since his music career started out in the 70s, he had been buying up Ferraris. Yeah, see, the SP38 is a gorgeous car. I have to say, it's a very nice design, but what is this? It looks too similar. See, what has it done? Pista, the Pista's aero, you see the S duct. Mm. It's not in the 488, it's in the uh, F8. They've took in the, uh, taken the S duct, it's in the F8 now. The back end is very similar to the Pista. They've put slapped on the SP38 rear end. The same engine as the Pista. And the interior is like a 812. So they're kind of screw you over the Pista or more. Now, I think like we have spoken enough about this topic. It is very clear to everyone what a disappointment this has been for us. I mean, if you like it, please tell us if you like it. Or tell us your argument against us. Like how the F8 is actually a decent car. But for us, I don't think it's a... I don't think we'll be buying any of the new Ferraris once we have money like that. Like, it's just not gonna happen. See, this is the interior. Check it out. What the fuck? Oh, wow, they've added red into it. Okay, now let's talk about this car's main and most dangerous co a competitor, which is the Huracan. Ah. Hey, my, I would and buy it in a heartbeat. Like, I think uh, it is uh, fair to say that the Huracan is going to eat this car. Oh, eat? It's gonna... They are not going to send it on the track. Okay, I'll tell, tell you this. one thing for sure. And that is another very shady thing about Ferrari. They have been just flat out refusing to send their cars out on the track so people can test them. Oh, uh, you know something uh, in between that had happened. Uh, so it was 2017, Motor Trend was doing the car of the year, the performance car or whatever it is called. And Ferrari sent a 2015 model car. And it won. How? Yeah, so 2017 Motor Trend, they were testing all the performance cars. Yeah. Ferrari sent a 480 GTB. So technically that's a 2015 car which cannot enter into... So it should actually be automatically disqualified. Exactly, and that car went on to win the whole thing. We see you Motor Trend. 
Yeah, and uh, Salomon had also covered this topic. Salomon was the same thing. They've fed a lot of money to both at least a million. Yeah. So I really think like they could appropriate these funds to make a better car instead of appropriating these funds to bribe people. No, because the thing is, Ferrari is a backward brand right now. Orthodox. Yeah. 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 I think like it's not even fair to say like uh, it is truly an Italian brand because if you really look at Fiat's history. It has done so much for cars. It has produced cars in countries where cars weren't a thing. In India, you could only buy a Fiat. In Egypt, there were Fiat plants who was operating and making cars. This is completely different now. It's just stagnated. And I really think their priorities are not right. And it's a big fuck you to the customers. Basically, Fiat was the Volkswagen. You could say of those Sorry. time. An Italian Volkswagen. Yeah. Okay, with that, we'll talk about the Evo now. Yeah. Let's talk about the Evo. Yeah. So Some the, happiness in our life. Yeah. So the Evo is basically, we've talked about the Evo in the previous one and now they've launched the Spider version. And uh, it's as insane as the Evo. It is, it is. I, I, I'm loving the Lambos. And even though it's not new, like the Huracan came out in, I think, 2012, 13? Uh, 2013. Yeah, yeah 2013. It does not look dated to me. Still. Even the Aventador. Yeah, the Aventador. yeah it, these don't look like cars which came out five, six years ago. They, they're yeah. still so relevant. Aventador is hitting a decade actually. It's yeah, ten it's years insane. Old. Like, and we also have to see the pop culture, how it's affected pop culture. Yeah, like nowadays a villain will not roll up in a Ferrari. He will roll up in an Aventador. Yeah, and. It oozes class. The car just oozes class. Like it's a beautiful car. And the best part about the Lambos is, if you get like an outlandish spec, it's for the fuck boys. Yeah. yeah. And if you get a very classic, like a deep red or a deep green, it's a very classy look. I mean, yeah. we just have to just go to America to see how Lambos. Yeah. Are. So every rapper wants a Lambo. Look at this, bro. What yeah. is this? You'll see the picture we're seeing on screen right now. <laughs> what? Look at this thing, man. This is a five-year-old car. Yeah, this is a fi five-year-old car. In terms of technology, this is like way ahead of way it. ahead of its time. Also, on this note, we should also uh, we want to ask you a question. We'll answer it shortly, but we want you to guess how many Lamborghinis are there in India. Yeah. Yeah. So most of you must be guessing 70, 80, or 100. But it's yeah. actually 200. That right? 200 Lamborghinis in India. Which is astonishing, but even more astonishing and, uh, is the fact has been confirmed by an inside source that we have at Lamborghini. We've asked them thrice and they've told us the it's same true. answer. Apparently there are a hundred plus Furakans. Can you yeah, imagine? hundred plus Furakans and also Lamborghini has given statistics that last year they sold 48 cars in India and they're looking double the number for the next two years. Even crazy is the fact that the new Urus, which, which, is, which just came out, 70% of the people who bought Urus are new Lamborghini owners and out of that 68% of those people were Indian. So we can say Urus has completely sold out the market now and Indians have the most number of Uruses. So uh, me and so while Hamad was giving you stats, me and Hamad, me and so were drooling over the new Evo Spider, Evo Spider and uh, it's a beautiful car. Mangti. We'll write what Mangti means down here. Okay, look, let's talk about the 200 plus Lambos. Yeah. I think so the Oros is an insane product. It is. It is. Like we spoke about it on our last episode also and it is still so relevant. Like it is just Oros is like money. a freaking 2017 car. Yeah. It's a gold mine. It's, yeah. it's, they really hit it. Yeah. Folks are going to hit the big time. Like Lambor, Lamborghini right now is like the best mixture of everything in Volkswagen. Best mixture. You have Audi level of quality and technology. You have Porsche driving right. assistance. Yeah. And what you have Lamborghini looks. What else do you need? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a perfect, perfect combo. Yeah. Perfect. That's the same reason the Conti GT, the Bentley Continental GT also is. Yeah, and I think so like the folks are in diesel gate, right? Yeah. This is like a big fuck you to that. It's yeah. like, yeah, still we still fucked up, but <laughs> our brands are doing so well. Yeah, but honestly, if you look at it in that perspective, American brands have got away with much work, yeah. much, much worse things. Of course. And I'm not even getting into the layoffs for no reason, but I'm talking about the Ford. Uh, can you just look that up, that car? It's a Ford something. It's, it, so. You will know about this. It was a hatchback where the fuel, uh, the fuel tank was right on the dicky of the car. So if you even touched it, it was just going to flames. And Ford thought 
they would uh, just just pay out the people. people. Yeah, they would just pay out the people. I've heard about it. First four, four cars assigned. When was this? In the 70s. This has been the first. Uh, no, go to the first car, I'm sure it's that. Cortina. I was saying it was CCC. Yeah, you see the back, back end of it? So, uh, what they did to the Ford Cortina was they thought, oh, okay, even if a person dies, we'll pay them over $3,000. But thanks to people like Ralph Nader, who have actively uh, campaigned for more automotive legislation in America and made cars so much safer that they had to shut it down and they had to pay a huge fine. So, uh, one thing I just I don't remember is Ducati owned by Volkswagen. Yeah, that is. Yeah. I mean, Volkswagen has the best lineup ever. They do, their portfolio is the best in the world. They can shut anybody out. That's why they got away with diesel here for so long. That's insane. <laughs> Let's move on to our next topic, uh, which is Pinaferina has shared a screenshot of the Batista. This is going to be unveiled at the Geneva Motor Show. Yeah, and let's talk about some of the cars that are probably going to launch at Geneva. And I think so, it's spider season right now. It is spider season. It is convertible season and everyone is coming out with convertibles. McLaren, McLaren. 600 LT Spider and the 720 yes. LT yeah. Spider. Ferrari, you have your 480 Pista Spa, Aporta, whatever yeah. that's called. <laughs> you have Lamborghini Evo Spider. Evo Spider yeah. And I think so now, uh, probably like Geneva is like the, one of the most recognized mm -hmm. Uh, automotive shows in the it world. It is the so, show. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, there's every point and everything. Yeah. But Geneva is, even the Ford GT, was it under. really took, people only noticed the Ford GT when it was launched in Geneva. Yeah. Like, wow, Ford is launching a supercar. And it is a great car. Uh, so, yeah, I think so. Lambo might come out with the SVJ Roadster now over there. It's about time there. Yeah, yeah it's about time. time. Yeah. So, yeah, I think so. Dad's going to come there. So this is the Batista. The Batista is something that we are actually looking forward to. And I don't know what's up with McLaren. They like just launched cars and now they're launching the Spiders. That's just a really big fuck you to all the McLaren owners. I don't know what's happening. But I McLaren. think so Pinin Farina is going to do good. They are. They are. I don't... Like the car looks insane, I have to say. I think so what differentiates Pinin Farina from all the new, newer brands like Aspar, Rimac and all those other brands is because Pininfarina has a history behind it. Exactly. Pininfarina has been designing cars forever. Yeah. And they only take, they, they employ from the best, they, they just don't take anybody. Like they have first dibs on design students from the University of Milan. This is one of the best design, design universities in the world. They, they just know how to do it. You name a really good Ferrari car and there's a 90% chance it was made by Pininfarina. No, 100% chance. What Ferrari in the recent years is a good looking car? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, okay, I would probably, if you told me to buy a Ferrari, I would buy the 458 Italia, Speciale. See, I'll tell you my top three. 360 Challenge Stradale, mm -hmm. F430 Scuderia, and mm -hmm. a 458 Italia. Honestly, there's only three. one Ferrari which I really like. Uh, and uh, the best of all, is the best of all. That is like a proper Miami yeah. I think that car speaks to a generation of people like, yes, we are degenerates. Look at this car. It's not even properly designed. It's not properly designed. It just becomes wider towards the end. Yeah. But just when you drive around that car, apparently for a liter of gas, it would give you half a kilometer. So beautiful times, gas was cheap, you had a car that was impractical, you would take around 10 minutes to park it in your house, you just like, it was just so cool, you know, and like the performance was great as well, Yeah. didn't break down. And the only other option people had back then was the Kundash, I think, right? Yeah, the Kundash came so, a little, little later, but yeah. The Kundash is also, uh, but uh, I think the Testarossa more. was more practical in terms of exactly. if you compare to the Kundash. Exactly. Yeah. The yeah. Kundash is like you're sitting in a box, you yeah. can't see yeah. shit. Yeah. The clutch is like a fucking one-ton yeah. yeah, stone. And surprisingly, they're, they're appreciating right now. 
That's Dude, true. of course they are. Now the people, next are the the good no, as well. people do not know what olden Lamborghinis are, and now they're getting the gist of it. Like, oh my god, these were insane cars. This could yeah. be Miura. They're going like five, six. Million. Yeah, Miura. Yeah. No, no, dude, dude. If you Miura, get it, in Miura. my opinion, Miura is the most beautiful car. No, the Miura is a very what do you say? Important car because I would say that the Miura invented the supercar because before that there was not a single road car which was mid-engine. True. It was the first mid-engine road car, so it practically invented the word supercar. And after that, the Countach came, which was another insane design. Mm -hmm. I think so. The Diablo will take time to appreciate because that was a bit. I I don't think the Diablo is going to appreciate anytime soon. I think we'll be able to afford one. No, no, no. But I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy it either. It's too big, bro. It's too big. We'll just uh, ask Chirag to handle it. Like, if you don't know who Chirag is, what are you doing with life? <laughs> we'll put a picture of him right now. Two months. It's oh, good. it's a timeless design. So, I, I still remember the first time I saw a Lamborghini Miura. I was just flipping through a car and I was like, what is this? Like, it looks something which cannot be fast because it, it looks so elegant. Sitting and it's so long, but the performance and you can really see people care about that car because there are people out in the Middle East, out in all the way in America, they're still taking care of these cars, driving them every weekend. In fact, Petrol Dish did a really great episode on a Red Miura, which is out in Houston. Yeah. So let's talk about something which is very astonishing now. Yeah. Let's get on to uh, so yes, this. Yes. This this news just came this morning through Road and Track, and it blew all of us away, and we are still. Just digesting this. Uh, yeah, so basically, Koenigsegg and Saab, yeah. both of the Swedish companies, have been bought out by a company name, I think so, NEVS, N E V S. Yeah, Chinese companies have really, really weird yeah. names that I have consorted. I only know the famous one, which is Geely. Which Geely, is, uh, yeah, yeah. Bought out right. Volvo. Yeah. Volvo and Porsche. So, Saab, which was a huge brand, and I don't think we've touched upon Saab ever before no, here. No. Saab made beautiful cars, very efficient, they were also really popular at one time, and if you watch Seinfeld, you would know that Jerry had a Saab in the second the season. Saab are beautiful cars, and my favorite is the Saab 900 Turbo, yeah. and it's just, there is nothing like that on the planet. We'll put a picture of it right now. There is nothing like that Turbo car, and like, you know, they're like alphas, I would say, to some extent. Yeah, you know? they are. And, and, I think so. and they were made by in the same company which made fighter jets. Yeah. How cool is that? And that same hangar is used by Koenigsegg. Yeah, yeah, it's used by Koenigsegg. Yeah. And so I you're not bought so. them or anything, so and bought them. They just bought a 10% stake. Yeah. So it's not, not a fuel big, injection. Yeah. It's more for a fuel injection than a takeover. Yeah. And I think so if Saab was still alive today, right? I think so it would be on the top of the hypercar yeah. If yeah. they ever thought of coming up, which yeah. they would have. Yeah. Sadly, the financial recession in 2008, even though America recovered from it sooner, it really hit the Icelandic and Nordic countries a lot. Yeah. Iceland, Sweden, Denmark, Norway were really hit by this and Saab had to shut down in 2009. Yeah. But I hope these new coins and cars come with the ghost logos. So let's know. let's see. No, it won't come. No, because they're not producing that yeah. hand. Okay. And let's Christian Warren Koenigsegg is really happy with this. We'll show a picture of how happy he is <laughs> <laughs> next to this. The head has just uh, become ten times more shinier. Uh -huh. <laughs> so let's see what they're actually coming out with. What do you it's have? Electric I think V8. It's going and to be it's a naturally aspirated. Natural aspirated V8 with an electric motor. So we are talking uh, 918 stuff here. We are talking, we are talking, we are really talking clean energy here. Not I, like a Tesla scam. I think so people don't appreciate Christian Bond Bond. They don't. People don't know who he is. Yeah. He is a low, not a low level, but he is a different kind of Tony Star. He yeah. is. There are, yes. I think so, in my world there are two Tony Stars. One is Elon Musk and one is this guy. Yeah. Okay, because, yeah. dude, now, have you, do you know, do you guys know about the Regera? Yeah, we know about the Regera. The Regera is, it's a one gear hypercar. Mm. It's a one gear hypercar with electric assistance. 1500 horsepower. What the fuck? But I I, I get a little triggered when people compare uh, Koenigsegg with Pagani. Pagani. They are completely different. different. And I think so if you've seen the movie Apex, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in Apex, even Horatio Pagani himself says that there are a different set of people who enjoy these cars. Pagani has a completely different set of uh, clients yeah. and, and uh, yeah. 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 Koenigsegg has a Owners are the people who look forward to the future and want insanely fast cars yeah. and Pagani are like those Picasso dudes. Yeah, but 
Yeah, we we really uh, we shouldn't discredit Horatio uh, Pagani oh. because He's a, he was treated like shit by uh, Lamborghini. He they was, treated him like yeah. crap. I but mean, here's the thing: he had so much more experience than Kunisa had. And just imagine walking up to like somebody and I'm like, ah, oh, I have a Pagani. I'm like, no, I have a Kunisa. They were like, oh, what is that? And it's like, so I think the Koinizek has more of, you know, that you're into that niche market. It's just like buying a Adama Pige and a Patek Philip. Like, they're complete. No, but I think so. Like, I, I really hope you mean Adama is uh, more of Pagani, you know? Yeah. And Patek is like Koinizek. No, like, but I think so. After doing this, right, if this is like a production series, car, like mm-hmm. it's going to be available to the. Uh, normal market and what will I grow, you know? Yeah, no, but after that happens, right, Conics will lose their cool. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Because the thing is, I know Horatio that he won't ever do such a thing. Yeah, he won't. They're already two do. years into it. Yeah. I mean, look how well guarded this was. Like, only after two years, we are coming to know of it now. Yeah. I'm sure if Ferrari or someone had it, they would never do this. Like, I know for a fact they'll never ever do this. You would have known about it like the moment somebody spoke there, like, like leaks, 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 leaks. But that's about Kojize. And now we'll get to answer some of the questions people yeah. have asked. Uh, so the first question is sent in by Ayan Davis. I uh, And his question is, what are our favorite cars of all time? This is a very hard question. It is, so but let's like one car. Let's one car. It, like, you have only one car in your garage and you yes. have one money car. is not an op- money is not a object here. One car for the rest of your yeah. life. Okay, who's going first? Oh, you go first. I'll go first. Okay. My one car would be a BMW E39 M5 six-speed manual with Dynan Stage 3 kit on it. That would be my car. I'll show a picture of it on the screen. And if my friends are watching, they know what I'm talking about. So that's my car in jet black. I would take my kids out in it and stuff, no issues. It's a 600 bhp motor. So that's my car. What I wouldn't order? have kids and I wouldn't have a Huda car for one. <laughs> uh, I think so that's the perfect car for me because it's small. And Let's be realistic, you're Marathi, you're going to have kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think it's the Urus now. No, I wouldn't have a Urus, bro. So, no. what? So I'm really going to be. I'm gonna like start the kids in the fucking engine come on time <laughs> So I'm gonna be a little practical about this. And uh, I'm actually very utilitarian when it comes to act me actually selecting a car. It's a land cruiser Prado, isn't it? No, it's not a land cruiser. It's a Range Rover. No, it's not a Range Rover. It's a G. Uh, no, it is just <laughs> it is just a Volo station wagon, which I will tune. 850R. Yeah. 850R. I want to go camping? Done. I want to move furniture? Done. And do I want to rip it on the road? Yes. Any car on the road I think has tuned out Volvo can take it. And especially the new Volvo station wagon is not beautiful. And I'm so oh, glad we see that. In that case, space. right, I would have an Audi RS6. Yeah. The, I am not yeah. changing my engine. I thought you were I'm just saying because I have to drive it every single day. Because that's one car for the rest of my life which is a favorite. And in the beginning, I was about to, uh, to be totally stupid and say I would have an original Lamborghini Miura. And I'd be like, what if I have my groceries? Yeah. Where is that going to go? Hmm, if I leave it in the trunk, probably it'll just fry up and the eggs will be omelette. <laughs> it's not going to be a good situation. So I would pick a Volvo station wagon. Otherwise, I'm going to go full uh, Maharashtrian and just get a land cruiser. Yeah. Drive over a few autos, get a few people here and there, come home at night, oh, something happened, oh, the small damage, my insurance will cover it, mm-hmm. and probably have it for 30 years, you know, like, considering it's stable. So, Arjun Shetty here has asked us, Tiago JDP versus the... No, we'll directly start from the Tiago JDP. So, okay. let's, I'll tell you my argument against the JDP yeah, and the GT. Mm-hmm. See, realistically, I would buy a GT, mm-hmm. because it's a Volkswagen, highly tunable engine. Yes. Very good looking and very practical car. Yeah. The JTB, you can say it's overpriced. It is overpriced. And uh, like, Tata. And it's a Tata, yeah. At the end of the day, it's a Tata. No history, no nothing. That is incorrect, A. But I'll tell you why I would not go for a Tata. So Tata had a very good opportunity to take over companies in 2007. And they, could, they looked at a bunch of companies, in fact, looked at Volvo. And Tata had a. Mm, let's say they had a history of having cars which are unreliable. Like the cars like Tata Sierra and Indy cars also would. They would Indy cars wouldn't break down, but the other cars would. So what do they do? 
They took over two brands which are also known for their unreliability, which is Land Rover and Jaguar. Yeah. And uh, to be fair to them, they've done a great job on Land Rover. Like, I, yeah, I'd say that. Sales are on an all-time high. But I just feel like Tata doesn't inspire that confidence. Yeah, I'm okay with our army using their trucks or like somebody just driving around in their trucks. They're good for that. They're good utilitarian vehicles. But except that, I don't think it's classic. <coughs> in the safari, it just felt so weird as a car. Like I hated sitting in safaris. No, I, it just I, felt like I think things so poor in the sense like made. Tata doesn't have a history in performance cars. That is also true. Like, to be honest, I'll tell you one thing. The Tiago is a good looking car. Yeah. It looks decent. And this is a good take on the car. Yeah. It I wouldn't say it's a nice. bad car. It, is, it looks way better than the normal Tiago. But bro. Polo GT has a DSG gear. I know. You know I like say DSG. See the Tia, see the Polo GT. First of all, it's I think it's a five lakhs more expensive than the Tiago GT. Which one? The Tiago GT is like for seven point five six, right? Huh. On road probably it will be like eight point two. Huh. Polo GT comes for eleven lakhs. Three lakhs more uh, expensive than the than the. JDP. Um, yeah. So it's a completely different category also. But if you want performance, probably should go for the Polo GT. Yeah, because. I'm being honest with you, when you want to go, you're not going to sit there and shift gears even though we are all purists and love manual cars. No, like, it's, the DSG is just much more practical, you know, in city because you're going to be using it everywhere. And it's a, it's the first version of this Tata car and I think we would wait for the second or third variation. Yeah, because see, to be honest, on a daily basis, I at least see 10 Polo GTs. Yeah. yeah. On a daily basis. Easy. I see a lot of Tiagos, but none of them are JDPs. JDPs, none. Which say, uh, says something. Yeah. It's See, I think so. It's a good car. It's a 1.2 liter turbocharged engine. Three no, cylinder. Three cylinder. It's, uh, it's taken from the Nexon. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. It is nice. Yeah. When you and think about it. It's a manual. Yeah. But there are few things which doesn't scream performance to it. See, I am. I do not like three-cylinder engines. Like, I just don't like them. I, except Dhanraj, which is our trusted. No, it's a <laughs> okay, Dhanraj is a two-cylinder, so I stand corrected. That's the reason. Is it a two-cylinder or is it a three-cylinder? It's a two-cylinder, 800 cc engine. Dhanraj photo right here. If you've not seen it, how is that possible? But what I'm saying is. I would buy the Polo GT any given day. I would stretch my budget a little bit and I would buy the Polo GT. So, and you know what? We'll actually try to source a Tiago JT. Yeah, really. I think we should review it. The, we should review. We should review this car. We will review it soon. Okay, let's like, answer like few more. Instagram questions uh, that are there. Instagram questions. Uh, someone asked, how do we get into the rally for volunteering? And yes. No. Someone asked, when is the next event from TDH? Yeah. We're trying to do one in April. If you're from Symboises and you're the director of Symboises, please call us up. Uh, we want to do something which has never been done in India. Enough about that, let's talk about the volunteering that you want to do. Every time we have an event, uh, you will see prior to that event, two or three weeks, we will put out volunteering forms. So all you have to do is keep your eyes open, turn on post notifications. No, one more thing. I like Volunteering is a very sensitive subject for me at least. I want volunteers which are educated. Yes. I don't want people who are just there for the cars, you need to work there because the last event that we had, a lot of running around happened. We had a, probably a few lack of volunteers, but I think so you need to be very, exp not experienced, but you need to be dedicated. In you need to have a certain work ethic and you will have to go through Chirag Javeli for this. So Yeah, Chirag Javeli will beat your ass if you don't do anything. Yeah, so we would. Yeah, he's been I hitting the gym a lot. Again. He's been hitting the gym a lot. So I would say be careful of him. Right? Yeah. You cross him, you make a joke. See, he might look like a small dude, but if he slaps the fuck out of you once, you'll die. Yeah, Shreesh, we're looking at you. <laughs> Man, right. burn up sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna end this here. Like, share, subscribe, let us know what you think. Comment down below.